Well, I know a lot of businesses do put a lot of focus on um, cultural enrichment and, and development, but don't necessarily get the returns. Um, so we talked about, you know, um, uh, you know, one third of organisations successfully yeah. go about delivering that kind of cultural invention and that cultural enrichment. Um, so tell us a bit more about why some of those uh, success, well, the, the probability of success is not as great. Yeah. I think, um, you know, organisations are spending time and money on culture. On average, um, and that's a Gartner report, suggests that organisations spend about $3,000 uh, per employee on investing in culture. But only a third of their orga those organisations say we're actually getting the returns that we want. Um, and this is a hypothesis, of course, but my experience has been that um, they'll often invest it in procedural or process kind of interventions. So they'll put their leadership through a training course or they might um, say, well, everybody needs to complete an induction that has these components. And those are all good interventions in and of themselves. But unless it's supported by deep structural and behavioral change from the top down and bottom up, it will only ever have a significant, you know, it may make no impact at all. So you can't deal or change culture through improving your processes alone. It, and I think that's what a lot of organizations try to do. They improve their training or they introduce new performance measures in their, you know, performance management system and then wonder why they're not getting the returns because they're not actually addressing mindsets and behaviors, which is far harder to do and a lot more esoteric. So. It's no wonder that organisations back away at that point because yeah, yeah. it's hard to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, and I guess that ties in nicely in terms of our previous dialogue around how uh, you recommend and advise your customers that they invest, you know, adequate time, if not, um, you know, balanced time, you know, toward that uh, culture piece in alignment with strategy. So, I suppose in, in um, you know getting that balance of investment right. So, tell us a bit more about your views on that particular. Um, uh, area in terms of um, you know, that balanced investment in culture and strategy? Well, what I find really interesting is that the organisations I work with spend um, a significant amount of time on their strategy. So every year, um, the executives normally spend two to three days on their strategy. They'll do an external uh, scan of the environment in terms of what's impacting their business. They'll go through their strategy in detail. They'll build business plans. And then the organization just goes through this three months of planning and budgeting and a significant focus on the strategy and business plans. I seldom see that same level of energy directed at culture. Often I get asked to talk about culture on uh, the last two hours of day three of the strategy retreat. So that to me suggests, well, culture is not on, on the same level as strategy. And my view is if they just spent the same amount of time on culture, they would see a significant difference to their business. But it's often an afterthought or, or a nice to have than something that needs to be given the same level of effort as strategy. Thank you.